Hello everyone. I'm going to present on the protocol for the treatment of uh, neurodegenerative diseases with high-dose thiamine therapy that was developed by Dr. Costantini and myself, Marco Colangeli. I am Dr. Costantini's assistant. Quickly, table of contents. We first will see how we got to the invention we are proposing and presenting today. Then, what are the neurodegenerative diseases that we are treating with the sex with this therapy, and other diseases explored and future steps. And then we will go over and conclude with some conclusions about our experience. In June 2010, a patient affected by ulcerative colitis with severe fatigue as an extra intestinal symptoms went to the uh, office of Dr. Costantini. Chronic fatigue is characterized by a um, non-restoring type of sleep pattern and it is accompanied by other symptoms which include cramps, diffuse pain, irritability and other um, type of um, non-motor symptoms or uh, extra intensity in health symptoms. These symptoms are shared by a peculiar disease that is known as beriberi. Beriberi is a thiamine deficiency that is due either to malabsorption or under intake, meaning that the thiamine, which is usually uh, vitamin B1, which is usually um, contained in many foods, such as um, raw grains, for instance, or uh, pork meat, um, is not sufficiently intaken by the um, patients or there is a problem of malabsorption. So the first hypothesis was that due to the diarrhea, which is a component of ulcerative colitis, the patient lost most of the thiamine ingested. So the patient was treated with uh, 50 milligrams a day of thiamine in intramuscular uh, form because the patient was suspected to have beriberi. As early as five hours after the injection, the patient experienced a complete regression of the fatigue, which is diagnostic from the point of view of um, diagnosing a thiamine deficiency. In fact, thiamine deficiency is diagnosed through the injection of thiamine and the consequential response of the patient. The um, important aspect is that in the following days after this injection, there was also the complete regression of other extraintestinal symptoms, not only chronic fatigue, but many others. Uh, since then, the therapy was adjusted empirically, and now the same therapy is still consistently performed by this patient. Since 2010, the patient is, got, lives in a much better health condition, and most of the symptoms have regressed. So, originally we expected that the thiamine deficiency was due to the fact that um, thiamine was lost through the feces, and so we tested the levels in the blood of thiamine, or vitamin B1, and with our great surprise, we realized that the levels of thiamine in the blood of patients before the therapy were actually within the normal uh, range. So this meant that another reason existed for the patients to show the symptoms of thiamine deficiency, and it was not linked to the fact that thiamine was enough and lost, but was due to some other dysfunction of the transport of thiamine, because thiamine was available in the blood, even though there were symptoms of thiamine deficiency. So something has, must have happened between the um, presence of thiamine in the blood and the fact that thiamine could not reach the cells. Now, we uh, published the first article in August 2013. It was a per first peer-reviewed article which is also available um, online uh, on the study of idle thiamine on inflammatory bowel diseases. And then we started looking closely because we were uh, intrigued by the uh, effects of this, of, of this therapy to other diseases, especially neurodegenerative diseases. Why so? Because multiple sclerosis, for instance, is an inflammatory autoimmune disease of the nervous system. So just like many other um, inflammatory autoimmune disease, the majority of the patients uh, affected by multiple sclerosis also suffer from chronic fatigue. So we tested the high-dose thiamine th treatment to ease patients from the chronic fatigue as we did with successful autoimmune diseases. And the treatment was extremely successful. Here again, we published an article on how high-dose thiamine therapy improves fatigue in multiple sclerosis. 
And then we took this thinking process a step further and realized that the neurodegenerative diseases actually many of these neurodegenerative diseases present chronic fatigue as one of the non-motor non symptoms. And so we realized that possibly there could have been um, an hypothesis for us that the pathogenesis of symptoms of uh, the, the fatigue symptom in neurodegenerative diseases could be actually the same as the pathogenesis of fatigue and inflammatory autoimmune diseases. So that if we were successful with treating autoinflammatory diseases and the presence of uh, fatigue, then maybe other ne neurodegenerative diseases, not necessarily auto-inflammatory in this case, could have had the same fatigue component to it, and therefore the same root of this problem. So what we did is we looked at uh, patients affected by spinocerebellar ataxia of type 2. After two months, the fatigue regressed significantly, but even more startlingly, what we observed was a noticeable improvement of a number of other symptoms. So we had to dig a little further into this, the potential pathogenesis of these diseases and refine our theory. And what we conclude, the conclusion is, is that we published it in the article that you can see right now on the screen on the role of thiamine and spirocelebera ataxia type 2. And I will uh, further explain a little bit in detail in a minute. So, SCA2, or spinocerebellar ataxia type 2, is characterized by abnormalities of specific gene triplets. There are other neurodegenerative diseases that share the same genetic abnormalities with uh, spinocerebellar ataxia type 2, and we started looking at these other group of the, uh, this other group of diseases uh, back in 2016. Now, these include the Friedreich ataxia, standard disease, also known as myotonic uh, dystrophy, and Huntington disease. These diseases are very invalidating and severe uh, neurodegenerative diseases that have a number of motor symptoms and a number of non-motor symptoms, including fatigue. Our experiences with uh, Friedreich ataxia was published uh, on the British Medical Journal, one of the very important um, peer-reviewed journals. And even here, we saw how the high-dose thiamine the, uh, treatment that we developed specifically for the Frederick ataxia greatly improved the symptoms of this disease. Also, we tried a long-term treatment uh, with thiamine with, uh, for um, patients affected by Frederick ataxia, and we realized that actually uh, these patients would greatly benefit from the long-term treatment with high uh, dose thiamine more than with uh, long-term treatment uh, with uh, the regular drugs that they are taking as of today. And then we also uh, started working on uh, myotonic dystrophy of type 1 with the same type of protocol and we also in this case had very uh, interesting uh, results, all published on peer-reviewed journals. Now. How did we get to what probably is the most um, evident um, effect of thiamine on neurodegenerative diseases, which is the effects that has the, the, the high doses uh, treatment we developed has on Parkinson's disease patients? The reason behind this is that some families characterized by a uh, hereditary form of Parkinson. Um, are, were found in literature to be reported as to having a determinant genetic, genetic factor that is the same mutation, well, there is a mutation on the same triplet, uh, on the same chromosome as in the patients affected by spinocerebellar ataxia of type 2. Now, we uh, followed the same hypothesis as uh, we uh, pr produced earlier, and we basically based on the previous observation we realized that not only chronic fatigue was our target at this point, but that we wanted to target all other motor and non-motor symptoms because we knew that all these motor and non-motor symptoms were caused by the, the um, mutation on the triplet, on the same chromosome as in SCA2. And so we started looking at these other effects. We published an article on high dose thiamine as initial treatment for Parkinson's disease because we realized that especially in those patients that have um, been diagnosed with Parkinson recently and they are not too far into the, the, the course of their disease, 
Actually, the, the treatment for high doses thiamine uh, works very effectively as an initial tra treatment well before um, the need for uh, dopaminergic drugs, which is the uh, classic therapy for this. Not only though, we also looked at the long-term uh, effects of the treatment with high dose thiamine in, in uh, patients with Parkinson's disease, and even here we obtain extremely, extremely um, interesting results, which I'm going to show in a minute through the aid of some videos. And then also what we did is we looked at uh, how the um, motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms were effectively reduced uh, by the um, therapy that we developed were based on uh, high doses of vitamin B1. So here you can see a video, a, a set of videos of patients from whom we obtained, from whom we obtained obviously consent to to present. And these are also available on our YouTube channel uh, dedicated to our experiences. This is a one patient who was affected by. Um, was affected by Parkinson's disease and uh, who was hospitalized uh, back in 2014 and he was um, in a very severe state of degeneration. You can see up here the beginning of uh, his experience. So the, this gentleman had uh, obviously an extreme uh, hard time in articulating his speech uh, he had uh, full stiffness of his body, he could not move, he could not control um, the, um, the walking, he could not longer walk, he was in extreme pain and in a very, very uh, complicated situation overall. As we can see right now, he was not able to move or uh, uh, lay in a proper manner, not even on in the hospital bed. And then if we move quickly to another aspect of um, the of this the patient, he was uh, asked to speak question, responded with difficulties. As you can see, his eyes uh, tend to have the classic lost look of Parkinson's affected, uh, patients affected by Parkinson's disease. And more importantly, you can see here that in order to stay steady on a wheelchair, he needed to be strapped to the wheelchair, as you can see here. The movements of his uh, limbs is much limited. Uh, he cannot move his... Uh, his uh, neck, as you can see, so the patient is in a very advanced state of uh, treatment with Park of, of um, Parkinson's disease, unfortunately. Only three months after the beginning of the therapy with high dose thiamine, instead, the patient is actually able to stand up by himself, doesn't even need a stick to walk, obviously. He Pierre has lost uh, the, a healthy amount of weight. Um, his facial expression is much more uh, lively. His eyes are more lost. Well, well, he can stand properly. He can move his neck. He can walk uh, absolutely fine as, com as, as compared to what his state was before. And in this other no. video, we can see that he's actually now even able to pick up a pen and write a few sentences, something that from the original state, this patient only three months before was, uh, he needed to be strapped um, at a wheelchair in order to sustain himself. If we move even further, we can see is that now another patient uh, treated with uh, the high dose thiamine um, protocol that we devised, this treatment this uh, patient is affected by an uh, early onset type of the uh, um, Parkinson form. This patient was only 18 when he was first diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And as you can see here in the video, this young gentleman here uh, presents clear uh, tremor. Uh, he also has a stiffness, a stiffness of his body. Uh, movements are limited, lost uh, look of his eyes. Um, he has difficulties articulating his speech um, and then maybe we can see later as he walks, stands up and walks, how the uh, tremor is uncontrollable, the, the stance is stiff, the, there's no uh, moving of the oscillation of the limbs, of the upper limbs when he walks. Uh, in general, this patient also has a very strong um, very strong uh, the course of the Parkinson's disease. You can see lost type of sight, uh, or lost type of look, and uh, obviously no, 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 classic, no, 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 no. classic um, 
diagnosis of Parkinson's disease uh, early onset. Now we can see this patient uh, only two months after the beginning of the therapy and still nowadays this patient still um, he conserves the, the current status. The walk is absolutely normal. Uh, the oscillation of the limbs is perfect. The tremor is much reduced on his arms. We can play again. You can see that uh, the legs are much better. The neck is in normal shape. Uh, absolutely fine. So the same patient has been treated with a high dose timing protocol. Now. Other diseases have been explored because many of these have similar uh, pathogenesis to Parkinson's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. We're talking about essential tremor, we're talking about also other aspects that uh, have very strong um, implications with uh, the metabolism of thiamine at this point. Because what the final hypothesis we came to is that high dose thiamine protocol is effective on those diseases that for some reason, maybe genetic or for other enzymatic abnormalities, uh, hinder the correct transport of thiamine inside the cells. And so we do need further research to on this point, but we believe that we can see the, the, end of the, uh, the, the light of the end of this tunnel. So today we have treated a number of patients in our small clinic in Viterbo, Central Italy. More, of, more than 2,500 patients affected by Parkinson, many others of uh, other diseases which are less frequent in this area. Obviously, for what concerns the inflammatory autoimmune disease like uh, fibromyalgia, for instance, we lost count of how many patients have already benefited from our treatment. But not only Italian uh, patients have been treated, because most of our articles are published in English, the uh, scientific community perhaps does not acknowledge uh, just yet the advantages of this therapy, but patients themselves have done the research and they've found the benefit of our therapy and there are uh, many feedback from um, patients on, on um, forums and uh, other uh, internet websites such, such as the healthunlocked.com forum where under the uh, section Park on Parkinson's movement uh, it, it lists a complete um, a complete section dedicated to the high-dose thiamine treatment developed by Dr. Costantini and, and his group here in Viterbo. And, I mean, you can read here in this, uh, on screen that um, their uh, feedback is absolutely, absolutely encouraging. Uh, we have here, again, the, the chance to see uh, people uh, feeling much better because of this new novel therapy that is based on an absolutely natural substance which is vitamin B1. Again, we could go on uh, forever, this is a more updated version, there is um, several, several, um, there is several patients that absolutely are uh, raving about the great uh, benefits that they are experiencing themselves and asking themselves why, why some neurologist just scoffs at us as this patient reports here when they mention anything like this and see they are in fact they also share this fact so we do need to act on this we do need to um, take this therapy a step further okay because we have patented our therapy for the main symptoms but we need further support for a multi-location double blind randomized placebo control study because that is the way to obtain full fda authorization and therefore to patent this therapy internationally now if we can achieve this what we can do for the patients is that we can uh, make sure that all neurologists are aware of this uh, therapy and that also um, there is very well controlled and FDA approved medication that are based on high dose thiamine because as of today these uh, our patients obtain vitamin B1 in dosage that are we prescribe through their own pharmacists uh, most of the time some somebody may also get them online um, these uh, forms of supplements but this is out of our control obviously so what is important is that we put forward a uh, multi-location double-blind randomized and placebo control basically bulletproof study to understand better how the protocol works 
to obtain FDA authorization and to also possibly improve it even further because with our uh, means so far what we could have done but I think we have done, but we need to do more and we know that many, many million patients worldwide could benefit from this treatment. In conclusion, and this is also an interesting point for, uh, in, uh, for to, to look at uh, when we look at the potential for this therapy, at current prices each of our patients spends about some 200 to 300 US dollars per year, or we could say like one dollar a day to purchase the, the thiamine that they need uh, to use for their, for their whole life. And we are talking about current prices. Now, worldwide, it is estimated that there, is a, that there exists about 10 million people affected by Parkinson's only. Okay, and we, as we said, we've treated many other diseases. Now, this gives us an under, uh, more or less um, volume of uh, revenues for the treatment of 3.6 billion US dollars per year. And this is considering obviously that 100% of people worldwide would uptake, but even if it's only 10%, 10%, only 1 million people that spend $360 uh, per year, we are talking about 300 plus million US dollars per year in revenues. Clearly, there is a, uh, a business there. And this is only considering the patients affected by Parkinson's disease, okay? So other diseases will likely even double, if not triple, this value. Thank you for listening.